Hello YouTube, this is Vistabuntu, and welcome to another episode of my Let's Play series of the Technic SSP mod pack for Minecraft 125. Uh, in the last episode, we started making some things in the Thalmic Infuser here. Um, the Taint Detector we made just before ending the episode, and the V Detector was in the process of being made, and now those are both done. Um, I also made enchanted wood using some aqueous crystals and um, great wood logs. And so now we have enough resources here to make, um, what was it again? Arcane bellows? Yeah, arcane bellows. And that doesn't require the infuser at all. Um, so we'll do that in a moment. But I want to point out a few uh, minor changes to the area. So um, probably noticed if you've seen the previous episodes that there's, there's a big change, which is the uh, cactus wall. I got kind of tired <laughs> of um, constantly being interrupted by those purple slimes. Yes, I see you. And um, snakes sometimes, too. Um, not that they're like a big threat or anything, but at least having a cactus wall will grant me a little bit of... Uh, uh, I, I won't be interrupted nearly as much, so I can focus a little better. Um, so that's new. I also, because I spent a little bit of time on that, um, have accumulated quite a bit of stuff here because I kept topping up the uh, cobblestone stacks here, which I'm going to do again now that it's getting a, a bit low. Um, I slowed down this timer because instead of running every 0.8 seconds and being like a fast metronome playing in the background every time I'm buying my stuff here, now you, you only hear it like every 10 seconds or so and it's much less uh, noticeable. Which is awesome, because that gets pretty annoying after a while. Um, anything else? Oh, right. Um, so since I have the V detector and taint detector in my inventory, it doesn't even have to be in the hot bar, just in my inventory. Um, you'll see in the bottom right corner of my screen. I can't like highlight it while playing, but um, you see like a, a a couple of bars. The there's a pink bar and a purple bar, and the um, pink bar is for the aura level of this current chunk that I'm in. Um, so anything in like this area here, if you look at the mini-map, I have chunk borders turned on. So the um, kind of grid you see is showing that I'm in one chunk right now, and I pass into another chunk here. And when I do that, the um, taint level, the dark purple bar, actually changes a little bit. It's hard to see because there's stuff in the way. But when I go this way, I pass another chunk border, and it's more significant of a change. You see the V level, the aura level of the chunk, change also. Um, it, but the taint also increases when I when I move here. That glow around the um, purple area indicates that something is contributing to the um, taint charge in that area, which basically the glow around that purple circle means that there is a taint charge that is not zero. It's a, a positive taint charge in the, this uh, chunk. And it seems to be, I haven't quite figured it out because I've just started using it, but it seems like that uh, taint charge thing, that glow, is not like a constant effect. It seems like it like only takes effect every every so on, or every so many seconds or so. Um, because like, you saw earlier that it was lit, but now it's not. Um, so I don't know how frequently that changes or, or what, but it's good to know while walking around if I see that purple ball glow, there's probably something in that chunk contributing to an increasing taint level. So I want to keep an eye on that chunk, because over time, if the taint level gets high enough, then it can cause the aura to drop in that chunk and eventually cause a taint infection. Um, I did some reading also, and um, first let me do this before going a little bit further because it's empty. Alright, cool. So, um, so I did some reading, and these guys, the um, monoliths, which are all over the place in um, Mistcraft pages. 
There's like two in my view over that way, and one here, and that's not one, that's my um, exchanger. If you saw a couple episodes back, I think, um, basically I throw things in the pit below, and I get zombie brains in return, because they're not... Um, there's no way to get them otherwise that I could find in this mod, no, mod pack, and it seems to be a bug. But that aside, um, I did some reading, and it's important to know just having the monolith present contributes to the taint charge of that chunk. And it seems to be pretty slow, a small like a small contribution, like just having it present. I think I couldn't quite figure out for sure in the wiki what, what it meant. Um, I don't know if it meant like the number of blocks of the monolith each contribute a certain amount to the taint charge, or just having a monolith present contributes exactly this amount, but there was an amount of plus one. So I have the impression that they slowly increase the taint charge of that chunk and the surrounding area, um, because they only have a, a plus one. I don't think it's like per block, but I do think that the per block thing does apply to some other situations. Um, like if you had um, actual tainted wood or something. Um, breaking crystal ore underground can contribute to the taint charge. And that, I imagine, is per block. But um, the thing to keep in mind, though, is anytime you use one of these things, the uh, Thalmic Infuser, the um, Cauldron, or not cauldron, um, art, whatever it's called, um, this, and, um, the Thalmic Furnace, for example, which actually I was using quite a bit before I did more reading, um, because it's more efficient and faster than even the Iron Furnace from Industrial Craft, but turns out each time that you smelt something in here, you're contributing to the taint charge in the chunk and nearby. So, over time, that taint charge, just by smelting things in here, even though it's faster or whatever, you're, you're actually affecting the taint level in the area, and that can cause big problems down the road if you don't keep an eye on it. Thankfully, there are ways to counter that. One of those ways is by using the silverwood leaves and silverwood logs. Where are the silverwood logs? There they are. I only have 22 right now. I'm going to do more hunting between episodes to get more silverwood logs, but for now 22 should be a good start. Um, the uh, key here is that each silverwood log in a chunk will convert one taint charge into one aura charge, and the aura charge is basically going to make that pink bar rise a little bit instead of the purple bar. The purple bar will go down and the pink bar will go up slightly. Oh wait, sorry, no. Purple bar will not go down because that's not the charge. But the purple bar will no longer go up when I do things that create taint charge. Instead, the silverwood logs will convert that taint charge I generate into aura charge and make the pink bar go up instead. This taint or a charge stuff is, if, if it's over your head, don't worry about it, because <laughs> um, it has taken me a lot of times revisiting their wiki and actually like playing a little bit here to figure out some of the stuff, and it's not all straightforward to me at this point still, so don't worry about it if it's, if it's too much. But the key idea is we want the purple bar to not go very high, we want the pink bar to go high if we can, because that might have positive effects on the area. Um, and if we have that purple circle glowing, then we want to fix that. We want to put, like, silverwood trees in that area, if it's an area that we're going to be frequenting. Uh, right now it's glowing, um, like we saw earlier. So it seems like every once in a while it'll do that, and then it'll, like, increase the taint level in that chunk, and then it'll stop. And I'm not certain... I don't think it's the wisps flying around. Could be. I don't know. There's four wisps in this chunk, and now there's now there's like one. It's still still rising, so I don't think that's it. There might be like underground some um, tainted uh, V crystals. That's that's a actually very likely possibility because there's like nothing else in this area that could be doing um, 
uh, contribution to the taint charge, from from what I know. Um, but back to this, it's really important to have the silverwood trees and um, leaves set up before using some of those things because otherwise they will make the taint charge rise and that will over time cause taint to continually rise in this area um, and just it would not be a fun place to be in eventually. Um, and I do plan on using the Thalmic Furnace quite a bit. That was the plan, actually. That's why I have stacks upon stacks of dust from an in industrial craft um, pulverizer. Macerator. Macerator. Pulverizer is from um, the uh, a, a different mod. But yeah, Macerator from industrial craft um, makes the dusts and such. Um, there is a furnace, the dark matter furnace and red matter furnace from um, Equivalence Exchange 2. Those also have a chance of doubling what you uh, what you cook through them, but they explicitly do not smelt dusts, only like ores. Um, so it's not worth it to use those if we have this alternative of duplicating things, because it will double double the output from dusts. All right. Um, enough talking. Let's get some stuff done here. First thing I'm going to do, um, this is not the right number, there. I'm going to make three arcane bellows, get them in place. I don't remember the uh, recipe, but I guess that's what it is. Cool. Um, I'm going to place these, move the switch, nope, crap. Ah, oh well. I guess it'll just keep going until it burns out. Um, I mean, that's fine for now. It's not like it's going to instantly be a problem, but it's good to keep an eye on it. Alright, um, so what I'm going to do... Did this run out already? Oh my god, wow, that's fast. But look how many fragments of knowledge I got. And I even got one forbidden knowledge from Cobblestone. I think that's pretty rare. Alright, so... going to put a switch down here, a lever. I always get that wrong, but yeah. Turn that off. Excellent. And now I can put these in. Well, no. I'm not going to cook any charcoal in here anymore, because I can easily do it here. It's not that much of a loss compared to doing it in the other one. Um, yeah. Sure. Okay, so instead I'm going to use this for my initial plan for it, and really only that, because I don't want to um, produce more taint charge than necessary. Alright, so arcane bellows. Cool. Now that should increase the chance of doubling things. I think from my testing earlier that there was like 3 out of 64 uh, chance, at least from, from a simple test I did, when I had no bellows on it. But having 3 bellows on it, at the very least it should make what I throw in here more pure V and less taint. And it might increase the chance of duplicating things here too. So, what are we going to smelt? Eh, before we do that, I'm going to set up the silverwood stuff, because that's pretty important. I don't need that. Well, I'll keep it out just in case I misplace one of these. Um, trying to think, do I want the trees to be below this or above it? I like open air. But really, I could put this any height above it, and it should be fine. Um, I just want the area to not become dark. It won't really be a big issue if it does, but still. Which reminds me, actually, um, I did a little bit of shuffling here. Um, I was making blaze powder and gunpowder. I'm still making gunpowder here, because turns out, gunpowder, making TNT, 
allows me to make Nova Catalyst, which apparently is pretty a pretty neat um, thing, and Destruction Catalyst is even more neat. Um, Hyperkinetic Lens, I don't remember, but Destruction Catalyst is really cheap. No Dark Matter, no Diamonds, it's just Mobius Fuel and Nova Catalyst. Nova Catalyst is just Mobius Fuel and TNT. So really, to make the Destruction Catalyst, it's just 6 Mobius Fuel and 2 TNT and a Flint and Steel. And this guy uses EMC or uh, like maybe Redstone or something, I forget. But it uses those things to create explosions, like as you imagine, that's made from TNT, so that's what it does. But it uses those to um, to basically mine explosively, but instead of destroying things, it actually drops everything that it breaks. So you can just run around using the destruction catalyst on stuff. As long as you've got the fuel for it, you'll be able to mine stuff really quickly and um, also potentially kill yourself. But if you are careful, that won't happen. Um, and you'll pick up like everything that breaks, even like if you use it on a block of diamond or, or something. But um, anyway, so let's get the silverwood trees in place. I'm going to put them underground. Before I do that, I had a torch here. Um, before I do that, I'm going to replace these torches with jack-o'-lanterns because I found out torches are just slightly less light producing than jack-o'-lanterns. And even though it's not like a big deal, it's not a huge difference, it still makes a pretty big change in the end. Um, I could, down the road, use like um, antimatter relays between these, because each antimatter relay gets a bonus for the number of um, collectors that surround it. Um, but I kind of don't want to use antimatter relays in this Let's Play series because they also give you the ability to just throw any thing into them and convert it to EMC and that's basically a transmutation table at that point, uh, which I want to avoid. So ignoring that, I'm going to first make jack-o'-lanterns, put those around instead of torches, then I'm going to clear out this area underneath, put silverwood logs and leaves. And then this, at least this chunk and maybe surrounding ones will be a little bit protected from what I'm doing here. Um, which will be a nice peace of mind. So, jack-o'-lanterns would just be a torch underneath. I like never use these things, so. But apparently jack-o'-lanterns have the same light output as glowstone, blo um, blocks of glowstone. Now will that break if I break the block underneath? It won't. Okay, so that's just a pumpkin thing. Right. just realized. Well, I could just break them later on and pick up the torches from on top. But yeah, it will, um, maybe I'll just leave the top open because right now, well, it's overcast, I think, but the age has a world setting of bright and eternal day. So like the sun is literally right above, even though there's occasional weather, you just saw it come out. Um, and it's immediately, like it's directly above. So it should be like peak brightness of 15. I had the torches on top just in case it would help, but I don't even know if it was doing anything. So I will leave those uncovered. Maybe actually just keep a torch on top because sometimes it does get cloudy and it's easier to access the collectors with a torch on top. Need more of these.
Alright, so I think I've got one jack-o'-lantern under each one of these, and they're all surrounded with jack-o'-lanterns now. So, they should be going up as fast as possible, other than this. Now let's see. Yeah, I don't think it's really making any noticeable change there. But, it's better than not trying. So, alright. This stopped writing again. So I need to refill it. That is really fast. I'm going to have to really keep an eye on this thing if I want it to uh, keep making stuff for me. That's regular stone, but I don't care. Really, I'll do that too. Okay. So I've got my bellows. I've got those lit up. I have... Jack-o'-lantern needs to put away, and then I will start digging. I... By the way, I was making the blaze powder. I have 30 in my... Um, alchemy bag here. For future use, but... Um, I was making blaze powder in in here because since the fuel types go through different stages to like get to the next tier like you start with charcoal and it goes up to something else and then it goes to coal I think yeah charcoal redstone coal gunpowder etc um, if you ha if you don't have much for example gunpowder or blaze powder in this case because I haven't been to the nether yet I might as well use these collectors to generate a bunch of blaze powder and keep it for future use. And then once I've got enough, just let them upgrade to something more useful, in this case being Mobius fuel. Um, so that's what I'm doing there. Time to dig though. So I'll put the logs in here for future. Hmm. Yeah, you can't get me now, can you? Alright. Um, and actually, since these are four chunks, I really should have looked at the map before building this, but um, I'll need to like put the silverwood trees in. Well, technically, since this is only... Well, this is in a different chunk, I think, than this. Maybe, maybe not. It's like right on the border. Um. So, to be safe, I should put silverwood trees in this chunk, and also in this chunk. The uh, Kazatum doesn't contribute, from what I saw, to the uh, taint or V charge, but it's in the same chunk as this anyway, so I may as well just, you know, throw silverwood trees underneath that area. That's actually a great place to put it. If I have this, like, glass platform, I could just throw the silverwood trees directly below that. I think that would be a nice place. And now that I have this fence up, these snakes also mostly can't get to me. Unless I go and, you know, recklessly attack them. Also, um, even though it looks like this is a two block high space right now, because I'm walking under it, it's just below two blocks in height. And you can see that because like this here is a full block height, and these glass panels, glass uh, covers, um, are taking up this block space that, I'm, that my head is in. Um, so keeping that in mind, I need to go down another space if I want to have like a two block high thing of silverwood logs and leaves. Really though, it should be good enough to just put... Oh, hold on a sec. I'll keep that open just to be able to get out, but I don't want to have the logs like at the edge. I like a little bit of symmetry. Okay, um, so maybe if I put that in like this pattern, and I can surround those with leaves. Hmm. 
I didn't measure this out, so bear with me. If I surround each one with leaves... I think they can go up to like four away as long as you put the first leaf directly against the silverwood tree. It's a different rule from regular leaf placement because they're silverwood trees and they're like they have certain rules because of um however the uh farmcraft mod treats them. So keeping that in mind, I'm just going to start this way. And you can see in the bottom right, each time I place these things, the um, pink circle lights up. Well, not each time, but you saw it light up maybe if you were looking over there. And of course, being a video, you can rewind. But just having these silverwood trees in place... Yeah, there it goes. It's lit up again. Um, just having these in place is going to, over time, help with increasing the... T uh, the pink bar and keeping the purple bar around the same point. The leaves though actually get rid of taint. It might be over time, I don't know. Um, again, I'm new to the mod and the uh, Bombcraft 2 wiki and other information I've read doesn't have very much information in some cases. And this is one of the things it doesn't have much info about. So. Um, yeah, that should help though. Um, the leaves, the leaves should get rid of the uh, purple bar over time, and the logs should prevent the purple bar from going up and increase the pink bar anytime that I do stuff. So that's a good starting place. Um, I might replace this with glass and do the same thing over here actually, but I think I'll wait until um, between episodes so I don't, like, waste you guys' time. Right now I'll just tuck it underneath here. Oh, god. Oh my god, I thought there was lava. Jeez. That, that gave me a bright spook. Um, <laughs> wow. Okay. So I need to be careful here. If I put the leaves, if I start by like trying to lay those out in a grid, they'll start disintegrating because they need to be a certain distance or less. You could have died a moment ago and gotten me a nice fiery crystal. Shame on you. Okay. So, logs, they're one block away, so I need to put one here, that should be enough to help me figure out the grid. That's going to keep happening. Hmm. Now there's this thing in the uh, equivalence exchange mod called a pedestal. Anyone not familiar with much of the equivalent exchange mod, um, basically the pedestal allows you to put various, like w one of the various um, equivalent exchange power items, like the black hole band, for example. Um, you put that on the pedestal and it activates as if it's, as if the pedestal is the player having that particular item in the player's hotbar and activating it using a, a short, like a, a key press. But the benefit of using the pedestal is it allows the thing to be used when the player is not even there, or just passively. And sometimes it allows things to be used without providing fuel for them to be used. Whereas if it was in the hotbar, it would require fuel over time in order to, um, to be used. And that's really powerful, and in this case, it would be nice to have the pedestal set up. Like, you know in more modern Minecraft, you have a hopper, which lets you collect things 
Um, how many do I have? Seven and two. Well, I have more sulfur loops. Um, in modern Minecraft, we have a hopper, which allows... Sorry, I keep getting distracted by this thing thinking it's lava. Um, we have a hopper in modern Minecraft, which sucks things up that are above it and nearby, and then pipes them into something else. The um, There are other mods that do similar things, that, like the Buildcraft mod has the obsidian pipe, which sucks things up nearby especially when powered. Um, so like you can set things up with tech to like collect drops from things dying on um, on cacti. But since I'm not like going the tech route very much, I'm trying to get very far in Thumbcraft and Equivalent Exchange 2. The equivalent um, option for that type of thing is the Equivalent Exchange 2 Black Hole Band. In order to suck things up, though, it has to be in your inventory and activated, or it has to be on a pedestal. The um, unfortunate thing, though, is if it's on a pedestal, well, the pedestal costs a lot. Um, the uh, pedestal is, um, you can just see it there, EMC 2.5 million, um, whereas each of those EMC is basically a cobblestone. A diamond is 8,000, so this is like, you can see, like 300 diamonds to pay for that. Um, so basically you would need to make 4 red matter and 5 dark matter blocks, which are each. So you'd need 20 dark matter, 4 red matter, just to make the pedestal, and then the black hole band, just to suck things up off of cacti. And you'd need multiple of them, because they're only in a certain range. So, it's definitely not viable using that path to suck things up automatically in in these mod packs or in these these mods the um, equivalent exchange to and in thumbcraft there might be something in thumbcraft actually i'm not familiar enough at this point hmm i'm not going to place many more at this point, um, I want to have some if I like encounter. Well, like over this way, you have the monolith, and some over that way near my um, portal back. And in the overworld, I have my home, which I broke some crystals underneath, so the charge there is going to be a little messed up. Um, so I kind of want to keep the uh, some of the silverwood logs to build mini trees out in those places so that they don't get out of control over time. Maybe I'll come back and do that between episodes also. So since I was doing reading on the uh, Bombcraft 2 blocks and features and stuff, I discovered that Swiftwolf's Rending Gale, which I mentioned before, this, this ring allows you to fly, I knew that, and that's really all I had used it for, but it also allows you to cause mobs to fly. What? Oh, nice! A wisp died and got me a cracked wisp shell. Would have been nice to also get a V crystal, but maybe I'll find those over time too. Um, <laughs> cool. Um, but Swift Wolf Rendingale not only allows you to fly, but apparently you can launch other mobs by like throwing a um a charge at them using the ring. And I've never tried to to do that, so maybe eventually when I get one of those. I will play around with that feature. Um, right, that hasn't been making any noise, so I'm going to put more cobblestone in that.
Awesome. So you see that pink ball is glowing again? So that's going to keep happening. Um, but keep an eye on the purple one when I start some smelting in a moment in the arcane furnace. Hmm. Gotta get rid of the sand. Sandstone, EMC4, smelting value 1. Hmm. Alright, so now that this place is a little protected, I can start smelting stuff. Um, I took all the charcoal out because I didn't want it cooking things before I had a means to turn it off. Is it still? It is still burning. Okay. Wait. No, it was off. Okay. Yeah, so now it's turned back on. I'll keep an eye on the purple ball. But I'm going to start cooking up... Hmm. Sure. Iron dust. I mean, you can always use iron. Then copper, then tin. Gold would be nice. I don't know yet. Um, I also want to combine the taint and V detectors into goggles of revealing. Which, thankfully... Oh wait, you do need to research that one. Never mind. So, forget that for now. Um, but yeah, 64 iron dust. Since this is already on, which is helping with V conversion. Yeah, look how fast that goes. Um, I'm going to see... I'll just let that go, actually. I won't keep an eye on it. It's pointless. Um, but let's see how many a stack of 64 produces with the doubling effect. And I'm going to put these in safekeeping since I have so many. Okay. Oh my god, this fence is so nice. I'm going to extend it around the tree farm between episodes. I didn't do that between episodes before because I didn't have enough cactus grown and I wasn't I wasn't going to just like wait around and continue to do that. But now that I do that'll be nice. Um it hasn't duplicated any yet. Wow. Okay. So I guess I'll keep an eye on that. Um, how are these doing? Five Mobius fuel. And this is a really slow process going from 64 EMC up to 2048. It's almost 2000. Wow. You are a brave one. I should make an enchanting table soon. Um, I don't really know what enchantments I really want, if any. But having almost 27 levels right now. It'd be nice to use them towards something before I die. Um, 30, 34. Yeah, it's not doubling anything. That's actually really disappointing. Wow. Um, since I have those trees in place, I'm actually going to make some things here. Um... I want a filter, a V filter, which requires, whoops, elementum. In the infuser, I need coal and redstone, or charcoal and redstone. So I'll start with that. Sure. And redstone. Wow. It is nuts having so much stuff, like, at my disposal at a right click and I know there's like way more powerful things I could do oh it did double some um, but it still it still feels awesome because like I'm not used to it so I wonder if these spots work they don't seem to so hmm it might be clogged with, with taint. 
I haven't been keeping an up uh, keeping an eye on that. But my plan is to have a V filter and a tank. Um, and I don't know if I need a pump. That's the thing I would have to look up. But the V storage tank. I would like to use the Thaumium Reinforced Tank because it won't blow up if you throw tons of taint into it. But I may as well like burn all the taint off right now because I have the all of the Silverwood trees nearby and it's the more economical way of doing things. Um, so to start out, yeah, I would just need 4 Enchanted Wood, 4 Glass Panes, and what else? Filter... Or more enchanted wood, more glass panes, some redstone, iron, and those. Okay. How's this doing? Oh, it's done. Okay, so it duplicated 4 out of 64, which is basically the same as we saw before. So I don't know if these are helping with that, but these were super useful for making the conversion rate of taint to V more efficient which is going to be really helpful down the road. So I'm glad that I made those early. And I really like how that looks. I'm going to definitely convert this side over to that too. All right, that needs to be topped up. Wow, I'm being... I should have just been throwing these in the whole time. Because um, I have like no use for that much sand. Well, I'll keep one in there. Just in case. But I will take glass panes. Anything else? No. So yeah, all these glass covers. They came from like... I think that was a full stack of glass. And I split it into covers in a few strips. So... After making all of this, I still have all that left over from like... 16 glass blocks, which is nuts. So big props to Red Power 2 for that, make, allowing us to make such such neat things like this and not lose the blocks when we misplace them and break, have to break them. Um, okay, cool. Almost, almost five a turn of this fuel. Once that gets to eight, I can make my first dark matter block or dark matter piece. Question is, do I want to? Nova Cataclysm. I forget how that's used. Not used for anything except for just blowing things up. So, I'm not going to bother using it for that yet. But, yeah, Dark Matter. And that's used for loads of things. Oh, cool. Yeah, I can upgrade some things from Diamond to Dark Matter. That'll be good. But again, I don't want to do any of that until I make some power items. Collector Mark II. Oh, cool. So yeah, actually, just I need like nine diamond to do it, but it would be worth it, I think, um, to make a Mark II collector. Catalytic, no. Evertide Amulet has to do with, like, making water, obviously. Vulcanite Amulet is pretty neat. Um, Black Hole Band, there's the one that sucks things towards you. Two Dark Matter. Archa Archangel's Smite, I'm not going to touch in this mod pack playthrough, because um, it's very OP. You basically can convert cobblestone stacks into arrows on the fly, and fire arrows that seek enemies. Like, you fire big volleys of arrows very fast, and they all target enemies and have like a guaranteed hit unless you're really far off. And that's way overpowered. Um, if it only used arrows, and you had to make those arrows yourself or collect them from some mob farm, that would balance it. But without that, it's just, yeah, broken. Too much for me. Um, Ring of Ignition, 
would be neat, but the hyperkinetic, or not hyperkinetic, the vulcanite amulet, I think I want more. I believe it's this one, because there's several like fire related things here. I think the vulcanite amulet is one that allows you to walk on lava and also have protection from fire. So that would be really powerful. But it's not as useful right now to have that as it would be to have like flight, which this guy would give me. And for that I need 4 dark matter, which is 4 diamond blocks, and 32 eternalist fuel. I only have 5 eternalist fuel right now, and I could upgrade some things to get like another one or two. Well, this is all done. So, hold on a sec. I really don't need this much gunpowder, but I can always upgrade it later on. Um... But yeah, so that's the plan, I guess, is to have, um, is to first get to that point where I can make the black, the, um, Swiftbolt Ferendigale so I can fly around, because that's a really fun feature of that mod, of this mod pack. Um, sand. Sure, let's research sand. Alright. And why? I don't think the placement location matters. I really think this is like clogged. Somehow. Oh. What? So it has to be in a certain... Because I was feeding a whole bunch of stuff in here. Maybe it needs the exact amount for like a quanta or like a, a certain amount of the V to pass through these pipes before it reaches here. Um, and I didn't have enough maybe to have that like, to hit that threshold until I threw more cobblestone in, but I don't know. Anyway, I can forget about that now. Um, making a V filter. Two conduits, four enchanted wood. I don't have enough enchanted wood, so I'm going to make more. There. One of those. Um, sure. Wow. Yeah, it must, it must have something to do with, like, hitting a certain threshold before it will pass it through the pipe. Yes, hello. Conduits, two iron ingot. Four of those and elemental. See if I remember this recipe. Cool. So got a, re a V filter. That's awesome. Um, I'm trying to think of how I want to arrange this, but in the meantime, I'm going to make more conduit. And I think the conduit is just. It does need redstone. Fine. It's not like it's uh, anything I have in very limited supply. I think I really only want one right now. One. Yeah, because that gets me eight conduits. So, um, 
I think what I'm going to do is get rid of this, put a tank here, and then have like on a separate loop here, so that it kind of does go in a loop, have a uh, have a pump set up or something. If I need a pump, I might not even need a pump, but um, at the very least have a filter in, in part of that part, that, uh, that loop, so that it constantly circulates the um, contents of the tank. That is so cool. Um, so that it constantly circulates the contents of the tank and eventually purifies them. Um, and I, I might be completely wrong in how I would make that thing, but let's give it a try. So the tank is four enchanted wood and four glass panes. I have exactly four enchanted wood now. Cool. And let's see glass panes. So let's make the tank too. Cool. So much progress. Um, I hope this doesn't like do something terrible. No. Yeah, I'm so glad I put those uh, the silverwood trees down, because that is like really making a difference in the aura right now. Cool. So let's let's give this a try. I put a tank here. It can't hold much taint for long before it can explode potentially so um hopefully this fixes that and i might have just made something really stupid i don't know yet but i'll, I'll keep an eye on it so that's like you see that um this is in a separate chunk from over here and it doesn't have as many silverwood trees so i've got to keep an eye on that but it's basically pumping since I don't have on, I only have one here. It can go up to like three or higher, but um, since I only have one, it's pumping out a lot of that taint into the atmosphere and uh, polluting my this chunk's aura. Thankfully, I have some silverwood to counterbalance to, to counteract that change. But um, it'd be good to make another one of those filters. Though I think, um, <laughs> I think maybe I just want it to get through as much of this as possible before I go on, since um, I don't know how long it can hold that before it starts to uh, fail and break stuff. Alright, um, what else? So that's not making noise. Well, that is. How low is it? this doing? It's going to take a while. That's going pretty fast. So maybe by the end of the episode that'll all be converted. That's a lot of gunpowder too. And I shouldn't have been getting rid of all my sand now that I think about it. I have so much cobblestone and the sand is much more useful for making TNT. Which itself isn't as useful as what I want to make from the TNT. So let's put these in here. And do some crafting. Flint and steel. And I really don't need this flint and steel in my alchemy bag. Because um, it's super easy to make and I've got all the pieces I need to make it in here, so I'm not going to replace that. Is that going down? Hard to tell. I think it's going down. That should be excellent. And the um, 
faint level in the area is a little bit higher. And it's rising. So yeah, I need to put more on that. And I just realized, um, no, this is a separate chunk from, uh, from here. So these logs should be having effect on it. All right, um, rid of that, make a TNT. I need two TNT. I think I only need two. And each TNT is five. I never make TNT, so might seem obvious to some people, but not me. Alright, so for two means I need ten. That's not how you do it. Um, two, there. Awesome. Four Nova Catalysts. Flint and steel. Four Mobius fuel. Make? Destruction Catalyst. Sweet. So, um... I also just realized I need to charge my Klein Star if I'm going to use it. I'm going to put these away. Hmm. That does work. Awesome. I wasn't sure if that would do it. So yeah, I'll just leave that in there for a little bit, actually, and we'll return to the Destruction Catalyst later on. Um, and I don't need all of this sand, and I don't need all that gunpowder, I don't think. this gets more polluted. It's actually not looking too bad in the bottom right corner. This is not a good item to hold while examining that. Alright, so yeah, it it is still increasing the taint charge, but it went through everything that was in there pretty quickly, and now it's done. So with these three bellows, I should be producing less taint, especially with Atomic Furnace there. I should be producing less taint than I would otherwise, and now that I have this set up, that smaller amount of taint should get even smaller, and what should be left in here is pure V. Hoping this setup works. So let's um let's cook some stuff in here and see how it does. Ooh, that's a nice shade. So yeah, that Paint is um, getting sucked up directly to that and leaving pure V. And eventually this is going to fill and it's going to start getting darker. Like, you might be able to tell right now, but I think that's happening. Now that that's all full. It's really cool having the instant feedback in the... like, being able to instantly see the change in, in shade. But now that I have this set up, I really, I think I did it wrong though. Um, I think this should be on like a separate loop, and then this should just be V going out, because this might get clogged with taint. So I think it's pulling taint on both paths, so I might need to wait until it empties of taint before I can use this. I don't know, we'll see. Um, but what I want to do is make another one of these while I'm at it. Another two actually would be perfect. Um, hmm. 
but I think I'm going to move it over this way before continuing. I want... I did throw a lot of stuff in there, so it's going to be a while. So let's uh, focus on something else and then come back, because um, there's no point waiting for it right now. But if I break these to try re... Well, actually I wouldn't break either of those, but if I break this, what's attached to it might get broken and released into the atmosphere. And just to avoid that, I'm going to give it some time to process and get all that taint out. Then I'll move the filter. Um, so to make two more of those, I need eight enchanted wood, two elementum, so redstone and coal or charcoal. Redstone. Let's see if it works. Ooh, I forgot about that. Depleted crystal. So it seems like in some arcane infuser, orthomic infuser uh, recipes, it will leave a depleted crystal. And the depleted crystal can actually be used in making some things like the crucible and thomic infuser. And I think some other recipes that have to be researched first. Alright, so yeah, I'm actually really impressed with how well these are getting rid of the taint charge coming out of that. But I'm still going to be extra safe and build more filters. Um, right, so those should both be done. That was really fast. I think that's because I have the tank here with everything ready. Um, so it seems all of the taint is not present anymore here. It's all burnt off. Let's move this. I was worried for a moment that it wouldn't break. Um, put it there. Conveniently, these things just popped right into my inventory. Um, put that away. There's four here already. Should be useful later. I'm going to put this in here. Top this off. Right. Okay. So this does have some dupli doubling, whatever, um, potential, which is still better than nothing, which would come from the later game Dark Matter Furnace or Red Matter Furnace. So I'm glad that we've got this set up. And now I'm not afraid of using it because we have all of the silverwood balancing out the taint charge change. So let's throw in more stuff while we do some while we make some progress with the filter. I'm gonna make oh there's only sixty there. I'll make a bunch of tin. Alright. Um, enchanted wood, right. Now the question is, which B crystals do I want to use for that? I think I can use tainted crystals to make enchanted wood. No, I can't. There's not really many uses for it right now. So, it's unfortunate. Um, earthen crystal, V, fiery, aqueous. The fiery crystals I'm tempted to use even though I don't have as many because we're surrounded by those wisps that drop fiery crystals when they die. Question is, how lucky am I going to be getting more of them from those those wisps? Um, aqueous crystals, I've got some of those marked I think, and I also think I have earthen marked. Um, this one is used for pumps. I don't know what this is used for. Those are generic. They use any non-taint crystal, non-depleted crystal. Um, boots of striding, wand of equal trade. I only need one for that wand. One for the boots, if I want them. Those are generic again. Yeah, so um, at least right now should be safe to keep those. Just have two. I'm gonna keep this away, I guess. Um, 
What else do I need? Iron. Wow, that was really fast. And it's duplicating way more. Wow. That was a full stack of 64, and we're getting like 50% chance of doubling. That's crazy, and look how fast it's cooking. Wow. Yeah, 50% chance of doubling. Exactly. That is really cool. It must be because I have this pure V here. Maybe it's like a constant supply of V that it needs. And before, I might not have had enough V available in here to properly double, which explains like only getting 4 out of 64 which is super low chance. Um, that's like 9%, I think. 10%. But this is 50%. That is super cool. Um, <laughs> I'm going to throw something else in there while we do other things, because that was done really quickly. Gold. The perfect thing to double. And there we go. Right from the beginning, two doubles. That is so cool. <laughs> Alright. Um, I'll put these away. And I'm confused why this is down here, but whatever. So make more enchanted wood. I need two of these. This should be done in no time. Oh my god, that is so cool. That is so cool. That was really fast. I'm super impressed with this. And I'm just like going a little overboard with these extra V filters, but again, it's a little bit of extra safety to make sure things don't break down the road. Um, cool. So, or iron ingot, or V conduit. Iron. Perfect. Strange. Yeah, that now showed up here. Must be sorting on certain rules that are not alphabetical or whatever. Um, actually, that wouldn't be alphabetical anyway. Earthen. Yeah, I don't know. But whatever. Um, and that doesn't even require the infuser. I'm trying to remember the recipe. Pretty sure this is it. Cool. Two V filters. So, the more V filters you have, the slower the conversion or filtering process is, but the more of the taint gets burned off instead of released into the atmosphere. So it's more, it, it's, it's a better solution even though it's slower, it's better for your environment. Cool. So, I'll put these V conduits away. I don't need V conduits anytime soon. Um, I'll throw more paper in the casetum. Charcoal. I don't need that right now. Loads of glowstone dust. Right. Grab more of this. And for anyone with OCD, it will spare you. Alright. So, three V filters, three bellows, tank of pure V and an infuser, and some depleted crystals, I'll put those away. Some wood. I actually just realized I don't even need to carry this on me, because it's super easy to get now. Um, that is really cool, and it's so fast. That's the best part. Alright, silver dust. And then what next? Copper dust? Sure. And 
and I have some wood, and since I have this whole setup now that is super efficient, I'm just going to throw the wood in there too. To make some more charcoal. And get free charcoal. Um, <laughs> that is so cool. I wonder if it would double the rubber coming out of the sticky resin, which is a silly thought in the first place because sticky resin gives you three rubber from the extractor, so... Yeah, never mind, I won't even bother with that. Um, cool. So these are, these are set up as efficiently as I can right now, barring making some um, next level collectors or some um, antimatter relays in between them. So that's nice. And it looks like there's like V getting pumped into here each time that it makes something. And it might actually be using V to do that. But from the reading I was doing, it seemed like people were unsure if it actually uses V or if it just needs to be connected to a source that has V in it. Um, so that's up in the air right now. Not really certain on that. But I'm gonna throw a bunch of stuff in there to make V. Popping some things up here and making a little bit more V. I think we'll wrap up this episode. Oh wait! Before that, I'm going to show you the destruction catalyst. Now that we're kind of done with other more important things. Um, cool. So this has 5,000 EMC in it. I'll take that out of the way. Let those continue upgrading. Let's go somewhere safe, or safe-ish. Nowhere safe here with these guys. Okay. I wonder, will the destruction catalyst... What will it do to these guys? That's not how to use the destruction catalyst. Um, Change it up. Right click. Okay. So yeah, it's not like this impressive nuclear explosion kind of thing. But it definitely breaks stuff and takes charge. So it's at 44, 47. Oh, that's so cool, the sand. Um, it was at 44, 47, and now it's like... I'm not going to do the math, but it's like 300 some... A little less than 300 some less now. And those, those balls that are dropped, they're just to reduce lag when you do that. But yeah, I'm collecting sand super fast with this. But it uses EMC like crazy too. Which is okay if you've got a massive EMC generation set up, which later on we will. But it's almost empty now. And I'm making a mess of my desert. Lovely. 799. And it ran out. Okay. So that's how that works. And that was only... Oh, that was only uh, the first charge level. Um, geez, really, dude? Unacceptable. you are a threat. Okay. Um, so yeah, there's other charge levels on this. You can charge it three times, but since I have no charge in the Klein Star and I don't have any fuel on me of like another kind, like red redstone I think works. Maybe gunpowder would, but um, let me give that a try with the gunpowder before we wrap up the episode. Since I have so much gunpowder. Yeah, 20. I could try with redstone too, but I don't want to waste that right now. 
Alright, so I've upgraded this, or I've um, charged this up three times. I'm going to actually lower that. Shift V. Um, now that I know right click is what is used to do things. Whoa. Okay, so it goes one block deep and three by three um, wide and long if you have it not charged at all. It goes three blocks deep and three by three shape if it's charged once. So if I charge it three times, I might not have enough gunpowder for this. We'll see. But it should be a three by three block in a long tunnel. So I'm going to go down a little bit under the sand and see. That's exactly what happened. And you get all of that in one ball dropped. And it used six gunpowder. So actually that was pretty, uh, pretty cool. Pretty powerful. Let's do it again. Yeah, filling my inventory with sand. That is super efficient. Um, so that's the destruction catalyst. It's pretty neat. Um, obviously very useful when you have more EMC generation than I do right now, but it's still super powerful. And if you can imagine using that down at Bedrock Layer, or around there where the diamonds are, you'd be getting a lot of drops really easy. And I don't think the uh, EMC charge depends on what type of blocks it drops. I think it's all based on how many blocks were broken, and that's it. So, that's really cool. But, um, yeah, with that in mind, um, got a lot of neat stuff done this episode. I'm going to wrap up there. It's been fun, guys. I'll see you next time.